Hi, today we're reading from Deuteronomy chapters 30 and 31. Um, now throughout Deuteronomy, we've heard God pronounce blessings and curses on Israel. Uh, these are the good things God would give them when they followed him, and also the uh, bad things that would happen to them when they did not follow him. Uh, now in chapter 30, uh, Moses describes more of the detail. Upon Israel's disobedience, whenever they would disobey, uh, God promised to scatter the people throughout the neighboring nations. Uh, but he says that if they returned to him, he would gather them back, uh, even from the furthest reaches. Even if they're, uh, he says, if their outcasts are in the outermost, uh, uttermost parts of heaven. Um, you know, that's literally as far as they could imagine. Um, he, you know, little h heaven is the sky, the universe, you know, whatever is out uh, off of the earth. And, uh, you know, we're talking about like light year distances here. Um, the furthest reaches of outer space. This It's obviously hyperbole as there was no space travel back then. Um, but today, you know, you could, you might take it literally. People go out in outer space, right? Um, not only is he going to bring them back when they when they turn and obey, uh, but he promises to prosper them in greater ways than he did to the generations before them. Uh, furthermore, the curses that he had previously pronounced on them, uh, it says that he would turn back on their enemies. Uh, he then tells Israel that uh, following God's commandment is not impossible for them. He uses this idea of heavenly distances again uh, to say that the law is not so far away that they cannot retrieve it. In fact, it's there with them. He says it's inside them, in their heart, in their mouth. Uh, he reiterates at the end of chapter 30 some of the details of how he blesses obedience and curses disobedience. He tells them that the choice is theirs, uh, to live or to die, to be blessed or cursed. Uh, and then Moses instructs them to make the right choice, you know, choose life, choose blessing. Um, in chapter 31, Moses is beginning to conclude his public message to Israel. He informs them that he's not able to cross the Jordan River with them, but that Joshua will go with them as their head. In verses 6 through 8 of chapter 31, Moses gives a speech that is both uh, inspiring and motivational. He says, Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Uh, then he reiterates this directly to Joshua in the presence of Israel, saying, Be strong and courageous, for you shall go with this people into the land that the Lord has sworn to your uh, to their fathers to give them, and you shall put them in possession of it. It's the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. Uh, he will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. The victory was already theirs. Um, you know, recently I watched the Super Bowl where the LA Rams beat the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, in uh, in his post game interview, the Rams wide receiver Cooper Cup, who won the game's MVP award, uh, said that he received a vision from God a few years earlier. Um, and he, he said that this, in his vision, he, they were going to win the Super Bowl and he was going to be the MVP, which all came true. Um, but here's what was interesting. He said that it was already written. He just had to play free, knowing that they were going to win. And I thought it was profound that he said um, he was playing from victory, not for it. Um, and that's exactly what Moses is telling Israel and Joshua here, uh, to fight from victory, not fight for it. Uh, to be confident and courageous because the outcome was certain, it was already determined. Uh, it was not something they needed to earn or achieve. Uh, God was taking care of it himself. Uh, God had proven that he could do it by the things they'd seen already in the desert um, and the the battles they had already won, uh, and he promised that he would do it. Um, and isn't this really how we as Christians ought to live in response to Jesus' victory over sin and death? 
knowing that the battle is already won, to live confident, fearless lives, not trying to earn salvation for ourselves, but still going out and performing at a high level in order to honor God. Here in chapter 31, this final scene, uh, God has this private conversation with Moses and Joshua in the tent of meeting. Um, it's quite a moment for Joshua, I think. You know, he's meeting with God, he's being commissioned to lead Israel, yet God gives him good news and bad news, right? The good news, Israel is going to go in, it's gonna, they're going to conquer the people of Canaan, God will bless them. Uh, God personally repeats Moses' command to be strong and courageous because the victory is at hand, it's already determined. Um, and it's Joshua who's going to do the leading, lead the people in. Um, the bad news, but as soon as they are fat and happy in the land, or as soon as God provides everything for them, um, they're going to whore after other gods, and God will forsake them. Uh, he explains that they will bring about curses, which are meant to lead them back to repentance, um, and eventually they will say, you know, they'll, they'll say, have not these evils come upon us because our God is not among us. This will bring about kind of a cycle of rebellion and repentance, rebellion and repentance. Um, and therefore God charges Moses to write a song as a reminder to the people to turn back to God when they, um, you know, when they rebel. And now, uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to wait until chapter 32 uh, to find out what exactly is in this song that Moses writes.